Oh, the gambling gods are a fickle crew, aren't they, guys? Listen, in 20 years of doing this, first as a gambler and as a handicapper as well, I have always maintained that the breaks ultimately go more often in our favor over the long haul than not. But I'm a realist. I understand that when you're out there and you get that tough beat, you totally disagree with me. But I think that if you were with clear focus at the end of the season, at the end of the year, to look back and realistically and honestly admit to yourself, you'd have to agree with me that more often than not, the breaks have gone in your favor than not. But again, those gambling gods are a fickle crew. Listen, look at me just this week. Wednesday night, I'm sitting there ready to count my cash. I had the Cleveland Indians at this $1.35 run line dog. And I watched Cody Allen, their closer, come in for the third time this season and blow a lead for me. Serving up a home run to lead off the ninth inning. Boom. Yeah, the Indians won the game 4-3, but it did me no good as a run line dog and it cost me the win. But last night, how many of us had Utah? laying the three points at home against USC. And how about the gambling gods smiling on us last night as the Utes come back and score the final 14 points at home in that game against the beleaguered Trojans. How about that incredible drive to end the game? 15 plays covering 93 yards, capped with an 18-yard touchdown pass with what, like 13 seconds to go? to give us the win and the cover and the home team. Now a perfect 6-0 and against the spread in that series since Utah joined the Pac-12 and it made Chris Jordan a winner with that guaranteed Pac-12 game of the year. Made me a winner as well for the third time in four nights last night as well, thanks to Utah. Again, the gambling gods smiled on us. And again, I maintain once more that over the long haul, at the end of the season, they will smile on us more often than not. But when you get beat, you don't want to hear any of that BS. And I'm realistic enough to uh, admit that as well. Listen, I've got a, a three-pack of free selections here to give you today. I'm going to take a look at the game between Notre Dame and Duke because I think the Irish will actually win a game today. Now, whether they cover the spread, that may be a different story. I'm also going to take a look at a game in the uh, uh, Pac-12 between Arizona State and California. The promise is to be a barn burner on the scoreboard. And also going to take a look at the uh, Big Ten game between uh, Michigan and Penn State. That's coming up in just a moment. Hey, listen, a couple of plays you might want to be aware of. You know, Chris Jordan last night, he had that guaranteed play on Utah because the guarantee was this. Normally, a top-rated 1,000-star release, like his uh, AFC total of the year with New uh, England and Houston under the total on Thursday night, a 1,000-star play is his top-rated play. Today is one and only. 1,500-star Big Ten game of the year, Wisconsin-Michigan State. That's available. You can save $60 off the purchase price. That discount coupon is over on the homepage. Uh, Brandon Lang has his 159 max wager release number 11 in a row going today. It's an early kickoff game. His first 150-dimer since Wisconsin knocked off Kentucky in the Final Four a couple of years ago. Uh, Chuck O'Brien, who's coming off 20-dime winners the past two nights on Clemson and TCU. You. He has his bailout game of the year going today. It's uh, Arizona and Washington. It's his 50 dime winner, number 21 out of 30. That's available for only $24. Again, all those discount coupons and codes are available over on the homepage, so you can check it out, plus a code that'll get you 24% off your total purchase price. So check it out over on the homepage. Let's get with it. Oh, also, of course, hey, you're watching the video here on my homepage. Scroll right down. You can watch uh, the Football Insiders Countdown to Kickoff preview show, which I host with Steve Budin. That is the show that we've been doing now for about uh, 10 years as we take a look from a point spread perspective at your top NFL games for Sunday's action. Okay, guys, let's talk about the game between Michigan and Penn State. I think it's a real interesting game sidewise, but let me tell you this. How about the total? I'm looking at that game and I see 56 and a half, 57 points. And it has gone up. It was 55, 55 and a half. It's gone up to 56, 56 and a half points. How does that game not go over? Remember Michigan and Colorado last week? Remember Penn State, Pittsburgh two weeks ago, the last time the Lions went on the road? Do you know these teams have gone over in each of their three games respectively so far this season? So you got a perfect 6-0 over stats so far this season. 
look at what Michigan has done so far. Uh, 45-28 home win against Colorado last week, a game in which they trailed 21-7 in the second quarter, came back to win it, didn't cover, but again, put 45 points on the board. 51-14 against Central Florida, 63-3 against Hawaii. Uh, you look at the Lions, a team that can't stop the run, a team that turns the ball over frequently. Uh, eight turnovers have led to 35 points so far in three games for the Lions. Uh, their defense not nearly as good, not even close, not even in the same zip code as it has been in past seasons. 34-27, the final score of their Temple game. Lost that game at Pittsburgh, 42-39, to their last road game. Uh, this is a team that has scored 33, 39, 34 points in its three games. Listen. I just think that this is a game that has overwritten all over it, no pun intended. So the hell with the side. Penn State's defense has a lot of injuries. Just play this one over the total. I think it's a cheap price. I just don't see this game being 24-13. I mean, it would be nice to think that Harbaugh's defense is going to play a lot better, but didn't you think they would play well last week against Colorado? And they didn't. So, again, with Penn State having that up-tempo offense that has been producing points this season, i got to look at this one to go over the posted price. Notre Dame's in a must-win situation, obviously, in South Bend today. They're laying 20 and a half points against Duke. Here's the problem. Irish are coming off that 36-28 loss against Michigan State, a game that wasn't even competitive when you think about it, considering how far they were down early in that game. Um, yeah, Notre Dame certainly can put points on the board. The problem is the Irish defense has absolutely been awful. 99th against the run. 84th nationally against the pass. 102 overall total defense in Division I ball. One of only two FBS programs that does not have a quarterback sack this season. And Duke comes into town here today. Duke which lost 24 to 13 to Northwestern, lost 24 to 13 against Wake Forest. Think about that. Northwestern lost its first two games to Western Michigan and Illinois State at home. And Duke lost to Northwestern 24 to 13. Um, Kaiser's been moving the ball. I mean, 344 yards passing against Michigan State, nine touchdown passes, two interceptions this season, 50 for seven, uh, 79 passing on the season, over 700 yards. So the Irish can move the ball. Problem is they have not been able to establish a run game. They have not been able to stop anybody defensively. But you're looking at a big 20-and-a-half point margin. Now, I've gone back and forth here thinking that Duke – you know, this is a game that they should be able to keep close, but I keep thinking to myself, this is a, not only a must-win game for the Irish, but this is a game that the Irish have to exercise some of their, or excise some of their demons. Who knows? Maybe they have to exercise some of their demons too. And hell, they're playing in front of touchdown Jesus. Maybe that's what they do. Maybe they need to the exorcism. So, uh, there's a lot of words that start with X in those last couple of sentences that I use. So perhaps we'll get the ATS win today. Hell with it. I'm going with the Irish. Start the song. Go with Notre Dame. Lay the three touchdowns. Go with the Irish there in that one. Uh, the other game I'm going to go with, Arizona State and California. The total is 82 and a half. Is that high enough? <laughs> I mean, what happened the last time Arizona State played at home against Texas Tech? Was that total high enough? Uh, California certainly could point, point, excuse me, put points on the board. Uh, as we have seen uh, last week at home, 50 points against Texas. Uh, lost and put 40 points on the board against San Diego State, allowing the Aztecs, the San Diego State Aztecs, to put 45 points up on that defense. And, of course, they allowed Hawaii to put 31 points on the board against them, but they put 51 on the points against the Rainbow Warriors. Meanwhile, the Sun Devils just last week, a clunker of the game in San Antonio against uh, Texas San Antonio's the Roadrunners, uh, almost pulled the upset before the Sun Devils woke up from that slumber and that hung uh, hangover suffered the week earlier when they got in that barn burner shootout at home against the Red Raiders as they barely won that game at the Alamo Dome, 32-28. to I think now they return home. They get that offense cranking again. And 82 and a half points. Again, this could be a 44-40 game. It is not going to be a 28-20 to game. Oh, it might be 28 to 20 at the end of the first quarter, but it is not going to be 28 to 20 at the end of fourth quarter, uh, four quarters. So again, I think 82 and a half point, these Pac-12 shootout games, 
you know, with two teams that all they do is like to throw the ball and Arizona State can run the ball effectively, as you have seen as well. I think that you have to go here. California has gone over in all three games so far. What the hell? Take this one over as well. So Arizona State, California going over. Michigan, Penn State going over. And I'm going to lay the points with Notre Dame. That's going to be your other complimentary play today. That'll do it, guys. I wish you well. Talk to you again on Sunday when we do this one more time.